In the history of American lexicography, there is a high point. Right? So it was a beautifully conceived, ambitious, well-designed project. And it didn't suffer from either of the twin problems of lexicography, which is one shooting too low and the other trying to go too big, right? They had a define the questionnaire beautifully defined, the data gathering set really well defined, and then they've just been working in the most dedicated way possible, efficiently and practically through all of the data. Well, TIP goes back a very long time. It goes back originally to the founding of the American Dialect Society in 1889. And at that point, the people who founded the society were interested in preparing a dictionary of American dialects that would be a complement to the English dialect dictionary that was being produced in England by Joseph Wright. Nothing was done in a major way for many, many decades. World War I came along, World War II came along, and nothing was done. But in the 1940s, a professor at the UW-Madison, University of Wisconsin-Madison, named Frederick Cassidy, decided he was getting a little bit impatient. He just had this burning, uh, this desire and drive to collect and catalog as many of the amazing words as he could find as possible. And he sweet-talked everybody around him into getting it done. So they appointed him chief editor. This was 1962. Starting in 1965, a group of about 80 people was selected to be field workers. Then they were sent out, five of them, in what were called word wagons. These were precursors of modern-day campers, but they were very minimally equipped with a little tiny stove and a tiny little sink and a seat that folded out into a bed. And the field workers who used the word wagons were sent from community to community, um, not coming back for quite a long time. But that's the beauty of D.A.R.E. That's the, the raison d'etre behind D.A.R.E. is that you have to go and talk to people and one-on-one -on -one sit down with them and elicit from them the words that they use. You can't just send an army of robots out to find them. And there's always going to be a place, and a big place, for people who are doing that kind of linguistic investigation. Because we tend to think that the written language is the language, but that's not true. The spoken language plus the written language plus the scribbled on walls language, that's all the languages together. DARE really gets to the heart of it, because it's not... The, the big thing about the American language is that it's not one monolithic thing. You know, there are different Americans speaking different Americanese, right, all over the country. And to be able to really collect that and reflect that is hugely important before it all goes away. The maps in Deer are unique to this project, and they're a little strange, I have to say. The first time you see it, you'll be a little bit confused because the Deer map is not like the normal map of the United States. Instead, it's based on population density as of the 1960 census. But what we do with these maps is to include them in the entries of the dictionary whenever they are of interest. You should be able to look at a map on the page of DARE entries and say, oh wow, I can see that that's chiefly Gulf states, or chiefly New England, or pretty widespread, but it doesn't happen on the West Coast. And these are the kinds of patterns that we include. They're very varied, but um, also very recognizable. So this is what's unique about DARE. But like the OED, or the Oxford English Dictionary, DARE is a historical dictionary. So we try to get the very earliest example of every word, plus others through the history of its use, and get a very recent one as well. I'm not. I'm not saying that Volume 5 is going to be met by parades and bugles and people dancing in the street, but in some places <laughs> in the dictionary conferences, that's what's going to happen. It's going to be a big celebration, you know. Frederick Cassidy always said, on to Z, and Z is here. And then, of course, there's plans for updates because American English didn't stop. We're still making it every day.